Next, Mr. Chameleon and the case of the murdered gold digger. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly interesting disguise, which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in the case of the murdered gold digger. It is not unusual for a husband to be late for dinner. Many a wife can testify to that. But tonight, in the living room of the Cook home, Susan Cook seems abnormally tense and agitated as she confronts her husband, Herbert, who has just come in the front door. For heaven's sake, Herbert, where have you been? This getting home late for dinner is getting to be a habit. I'm sorry, Susan. I had extra work at the office. Oh, that's interesting. I called your office about an hour ago. I was told you left for the day, about four in the afternoon. I did. I had to meet a man outside. I'm trying to put through a big deal. Over cocktails, no doubt. I only hope it was a man. Now, look here, Susan. I won't have any more of this. I won't have it. Aren't you a little too excited, Herbert, over nothing, so you say? I'm not as excited as you are. Oh, I... Look at you. Your hand's shaking. You're pale as a ghost. Really, Susan. Oh, who's that just at the dinner hour? Open the door and see. Oh, Herbert, what on earth is wrong with you? Open the door. Yes? Are you Mr. Herbert Cook? Yes, that's right. Mr. Cook, I'm chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. This is Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. Chameleon? You mean Chameleon, the famous detective? Oh, no. What do you want? I'm Mrs. Cook. I demand to know what you want. If you'll both come with me, I'll show you, Mrs. Cook. A girl's body's been found in the bushes near the entrance to your driveway. A girl's body? Is this a joke? Hardly, Mr. Cook. The girl is dead. Stabbed to death. I want you to look at her. But, Mr. Chameleon, we... look, folks, I'd do what Mr. Chameleon says if I were you. Of course, of course... Come along, Susan. This is horrible, but it has nothing to do with us. The body was seen by a passerby about half an hour ago. The police were notified, and I came up immediately. I'm surprised neither of you noticed the police car. My wife was getting dinner. I I happened to come in the back way. The girl was killed about six o'clock. She was stabbed several times in the heart. Here she is. Mr. Cook? Mrs. Cook? You know this girl? Oh, no. No, Mr. Chameleon, I I never saw her in my life. Mrs. Cook, I want the truth. This is murder. My wife is telling you the truth. I never saw this girl either, never. Well, as you can see, she's young. In a flashy way, rather attractive. Somehow that always makes murder seem more horrible. Mr. Chameleon, you might be wasting your sympathy on this girl. I might, but she was killed, and it happens to be my job to find the killer. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Cook, you may go back to your house now. I'll be in touch with you later. But why? We told you we didn't know her. Since her body was found here near your driveway, there might be some development which would necessitate my calling on you both again. Good night. Good night. Come along, Susan, dear. There's nothing to worry about. Of course there isn't, Herbert. Of course there's nothing to worry about. For two unworried people, Dave, they seem pretty much upset. Well, after all, Mr. Chameleon, it is kind of a shock for them to find a dead girl lying near their front door. Even a dead girl that they claim they don't know. I'll tell you something else, Dave. For two people who didn't know her, both Mr. and Mrs. Cook were dangerously close to hysteria. And later, when Mr. Chameleon is examining the clothes which have been taken from the dead girl's body, he says to Detective Sergeant Arnold, It's very interesting, Dave. Look at this fur stole. $5,000 job. Her shoes must have cost $50 a pair. And this jewelry. Every bit of it is real, Dave. Yet the girl herself is definitely on the cheap side. If only we could find some identification, Mr. Common little girl with too much makeup. Yet she dresses like the wife of a millionaire. Here comes the commissioner. 
Hello, Commissioner. Oh, hello, Chameleon. How's it going? Well, this is a tough one, Commissioner. Not a single mark of identification on the girl. Uh-huh. She's a gold digger, if my guess is right, but that, I'm afraid, is the extent of my progress. Why do you think she was murdered, Chameleon? Robbery? With $500 on her and cash and all that jewelry? No, Commissioner, the motive was a personal one. There was plenty of hatred back of it. All those stab wounds testify to that. But who is she? Who? Yes, that is the question. And until we can answer that, we can't answer anything. I have an idea, though. Yes? We'll run her picture in the newspapers, Commissioner. A big one, with a rather gruesome caption underneath. Do you know this dead girl? That'll catch the eye, and maybe we'll get some fast results. Dave, I don't understand it. 24 hours since that girl's picture appeared in the papers, not a peep out of anyone. Someone must know her. Well, give it time, Mr. Chameleon. Well, I know, I know, but a killer is at large, Nico. Hello? Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. Is this a Mr. Chameleon speaking? Yes, who's this? My name is Leo Long. I'm a waiter in the cocktail lounge of the Cornet Hotel. Is it about the murdered girl's picture that appeared in the newspapers? I'll say it is. I waited on that dame for the last six months. You know her name? Only her first name, the Daisy. But I can tell you plenty about her. Come down to Central Headquarters immediately, Mr. Long. Ask for Mr. Chameleon's office. Okay. Dave, we're starting to move. That murdered girl with the expensive taste evidently was a patron of the Coronet Hotel Cocktail Lounge. Uh... Hello? Hello, Mr. Chameleon. It's Captain Boyd of the 9th Precinct. How are you, Boyd? You got something for me? Looks like it, yeah. A guy named Samuel Simpkins has asked us to search for his wife. Seems she disappeared a couple of days ago. Wait a minute, Captain Boyd. Was the wife's name Daisy? Yeah. And has Simpkins identified the dead girl's photograph as that of his wife? Yeah, he collapsed when we showed him the picture in the newspaper. Send him over to the morgue first. Have him look at the girl's body and then shoot him over here. I want to talk to this Samuel Simpkins before I talk to anyone else. Thank you, Captain. Mr. Chameleon, you mean to say you found the murdered girl's husband? Apparently, Dave. His name is Simpkins, and she is Daisy Simpkins. Dave, we've got the first break. From now on, it's up to us to track down Daisy Simpkins' murderer. And a little later, at Central Police Headquarters, Mr. Chameleon eyes the figure of the distraught, nervous man sitting before him, and he says... Mr. Simpkins, your wife was found murdered in the driveway of a house occupied by a couple named Cook. Herbert Cook. Uh, Herbert Cook, you You say? know these people? No, no, sir, I've never heard of them. Tell me then, Mr. Simpkins, how did you and your wife get along together? Ours was an ideal marriage, Mr. Chameleon. If it was, Simpkins, I wonder why you let 48 hours go by before you reported her missing. Well, I... And I, also, I... why you claim to the precinct captain... That you hadn't seen this two-column picture we ran in the newspapers. If you think I killed my wife... You would not be the first husband who did, Simpkins. Tell me now, when did you last see her? The day before yesterday, before I went to work in the morning. Where do you work, Mr. Simpkins, and how much do you make? Four thousand a year, Mr. Chameleon. I'm head four walker at Allen's department store. I see. Mr. Simpkins, four thousand a year would hardly keep your wife in expensive jewelry. Expensive jewelry? That junk of daisies? It was costume stuff. It's worth thousands of dollars. I don't believe it. Simpkins, did your wife have any men friends? If she did, Mr. Chameleon, it was perfectly all right. I haven't got a jealous bone in my body, and I loved and trusted my wife. Very admirable, I'm sure. Two more questions. Are you certain that you've never heard of Herbert Cook? I don't know Cook, and I've never been in the neighborhood where he lives. How do you know where he lives? I, I read it in the newspaper. At what time did you leave your store after work the night your wife was murdered? Five o'clock. Mr. Chameleon, are you thinking I killed her? I can't believe that even a cop would think that of me. You would be surprised what we cops can think of. Simpkins, wait in the next room, please. Leave the door open. Okay, Mr. Chameleon, but I didn't kill her. Dave, send in Leo Long, please. Okay. Go ahead in, Mr. Long. Leo Long, I'm Chameleon. I want you to tell me when you last saw Daisy Simpkins and under what circumstances. Well, you see, Mr. Chameleon, a waiter like me that works in a cocktail lounge, he learns a lot about human nature. Yes, yes, I don't doubt it, Leo. But uh, please answer my question. When did you last see Daisy Simpkins? Afternoon before last at the Coronet Cocktail Lounge. She was with a good-looking soccer with sandy hair and a mustache. She called him Herbert? 
Yeah. Hey, how do you know that? And she was as mad as the devil because he wouldn't have dinner with her. I heard her say to him. You make me sick, Herbert. Why can't you phone your wife and say you have to work tonight? I told my husband I was meeting a girl from out of town. I get away with it. Well, I don't. My wife Susan's too jealous. I've got to go home, Daisy. Listen, Herbert, if you go home, I'll follow you there. You what? I'll follow you home. And I'll wait outside while you think up some lie to tell your wife. Oh, no, you won't, Daisy. Oh, by the way, don't let him see you, but isn't that John sitting at the bar? Yeah, I think so. So what? I'm getting out of here. Now, listen, Herbert. I don't want John to see me in here with a girl. Besides, Daisy, I'm through with you. You've gotten everything out of me you're going to get. And don't try following me, you little gold digger. So this fellow Herbert left Daisy in the cocktail lounge, Mr. Chameleon, and she waited about five minutes, and then she left too. Had you seen Daisy Simpkins there in the cocktail lounge often, Leo? All the time. And always with some man. <laughs> she suddenly played the field. You're lying. Simpkins. You cheap little waiter. I'll kill you for saying that. I'd kill any man who looked twice at my wife. That's enough of that, Let Simpkins. Me go, Chameleon. No, listen until you calm down. Get any help, Mr. Chameleon? Okay, Dave. Now sit in that chair and stay there, Simpkins. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chameleon. I, I lost my head. I thought you'd give yourself away if you heard this waiter, Leo Long's statement about your wife. You, with not a jealous bone in your body. Well, you know better now, but I still didn't kill Daisy. Well, you're still going to be held for further questioning. Officer Smith, put this man in the det detention room, please. Dave, that gives us the first break in this case. Well, that Simpkins is just the kind of guy who'd go nuts and let somebody have it. And Mr. Herbert Cook, who said he had never seen the murdered girl, Simpkins' wife, had been definitely connected with her, Dave. Give me that phone, please. Here you are, Mr. Chameleon. This chameleon, get me Mrs. Herbert Cook on the phone, please. And step on it. I don't want to wait here. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Cook. This is Central Police Headquarters, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Chameleon. We have information that makes it imperative that we talk to your husband at once. Well, he's not here. But I assure you, Mr. Chameleon, my husband Herbert and I never saw that murdered girl in our Where life. Where is your husband, Mrs. Cook? Well, at his office, I suppose. Arnold and company. But I repeat, Thank Mr. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. Goodbye. What's the idea, Mr. Chameleon? We know where Herbert Cook works. Why did you phone his wife? She is already phoning Herbert at my call, Dave. And if either Cook or his wife try to make a break, we'll nail them. So they didn't know Daisy Simpkins. Come along, Dave. We're off to Herbert Cook's office. And, Dave, we'll put the heat on him fast and hard. Mr. Chameleon and the Gold Digger murder case continues in just a moment. Next time you want relief from an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, remember that one thing you can take with complete confidence is genuine Bayer aspirin. You can take it confident of amazingly fast relief, for Bayer aspirin is actually ready to go to work in two seconds. And you can take it confident of really dependable relief, for no other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. Don't ever forget this unmatched record. It's important because it means you can take Bayer aspirin sure in the knowledge that it will bring you the gentle relief that's important to your health. So don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, fast relief and dependable relief, do as millions do, be sure with Bayer aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now, back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of the murdered gold digger. The stabbing of the cheap little gold digger, Daisy Simpkins, wife of Samuel Simpkins, an intensely jealous man, is still unsolved. But Chameleon has just learned that the last man with whom Daisy was seen alive was Herbert Cook, on whose lawn the body was found and who protested to Chameleon he had never seen the girl before. Chameleon is now standing outside Cook's office with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold ready to pounce, and he is saying, Watch it, Dave. I hear Herbert Cook's voice from the next room. He's on the phone. Let's try to hear this. Move up to the door. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. Susan. Stop shrieking. I'll handle Chameleon. You say he wouldn't tell you what information he had. All right, let him suspect. 
Listen, Susan, stop talking over the phone. Somebody may be listening in. You know where to meet me. Goodbye. I hope that we're not disturbing you, Mr. Cook. Mr. Chameleon, I didn't hear you come in. How long have you been here? Long enough, Cook, to hear you telling your wife that you'd handle me. You misunderstood what I was saying. No more than I misunderstood your saying that you did not recognize Daisy Simpkins when I showed you her body beside the driveway of your house. I didn't know that dead girl. You not only knew her, Cook, but the last person she was seen alive with was you. Now stop lying. I'll give you the choice of telling the truth or you'll find yourself in jail with a murder charge against you. Believe it or not, Mr. Chameleon, I couldn't identify Daisy's body. Blind that evening? My wife was there. I couldn't let her know about Daisy. The only thing I could do was deny knowing who she was. I see, I see, Cook. You mean that your wife was jealous? Intensely jealous. Mm -hmm. So after Daisy had followed you home, you killed her, pulled her body under that bush, went into the house and I didn't kill her. Why should I kill her? To keep her from tipping your wife off to your affair with her. A perfect motive, but not a perfect murder. I can't help it if that little gold digger followed me home. I can't help it if I've got a jealous wife. If that is your story, Cook... It will hold in court like a soup strainer holds water. I swear I didn't kill Daisy Simpkins. Herbert, what's happening here? Oh, John, these are detectives. They're accusing me of murder. Your name is John what? I'm Chameleon of Central Headquarters. Well, my name is John Anderson. I'm Herbert Cook's immediate superior in this office, Mr. Chameleon. Well, Herbert, this uh, must be serious. If first-degree murder is serious, you're quite right. You say your first name is John. Mr. Anderson, it seems that you fit into the picture... Me? But can, how? Can you take me uh, to your office? I have several questions I don't want to ask you and Herbert Cook's present. Don't tell him anything, John. I think it best for me to talk to Mr. Chameleon, Herbert. Now, Mr. Chameleon, I'll take you to my office. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Dave, you stay here with Cook. Don't let him get away. You're telling me, Mr. Chameleon. Here's my office. Mm-hmm. As, uh... This got something to do with the murder of that girl? It has. Mr. Anderson, on the day of Daisy Simpkins' death, did you see her with Herbert Cook in the Coronet Cocktail Lounge? What makes you think I did? A waiter named Leo Long overheard Herbert Cook mention a man named John. I see. Mr. Chameleon, Herbert is a nice chap. I can't Answer my question, please. Did you see them there that day? Yes. I... Felt dreadful about it, particularly since Susan saw them, too. Susan Cook? Herbert Cook's wife saw him there with Daisy Simpkins in that cocktail lounge? As I'm afraid so, she was there at a table in the corner. When Herbert came in, she got up and left. Herbert didn't notice her, but I did. Oh, why does a man like Herbert get mixed up with a... a little gold digger like that Daisy? Mr. Anderson, tell me, do you ever see the Cook socially? Oh, yes, quite often. I... I dined with them last week. Poor Herbert, he's in debt, too. He's been borrowing against his salary for weeks. Susan, it seems, needed a, an expensive operation. Poor Herbert. Poor Herbert may be a murderer. Mr. Camille. One more thing, Mr. Anderson. Have you ever seen this very unusual bracelet? I could hardly forget that bracelet. As I told you, I dined with the cooks last week. It was Susan's birthday. That bracelet was Herbert's gift to his wife. Why do you ask? It was found beside the body of the murdered girl on the cook's front lawn. Oh, this is a shock to me. I I can't conceive Susan Cook as a murderess. I, I know she was jealous of Herbert, but a murderess... I... No, it, it, it must be Herbert, Mr. Chameleon. And for a girl like Daisy Simpkins. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Would you mind showing me back to Herbert Cook's office? Why, oh, certainly... Here you are, Mr. Chameleon. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Dave, take Herbert Cook to headquarters and hold him, and then meet me at his home. Herbert, I'm on my way to see your wife. I know John Anderson has lied to you about me. I know he has. And a little later, in the living room of the Cook home, we find Mr. Chameleon saying... Mrs. Cook, I'm sorry to bother you, but some new evidence has come up. In the case of that murdered girl that you did not recognize. It's all right, Mr. Chameleon. Oh, by the way, I understand that you've been quite ill. Who told you that? Well, I heard that you were to have uh, quite a serious operation. Mr. Chameleon, what is this? I've never been sick in my life. Oh, well, I must have misunderstood. Mrs. Cook, are you familiar with the uh, Coronet Cocktail Lounge? 
Well, are you? No, I can't say that I am. You're sure? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Why do you ask? Because you were there the afternoon of the murder. What? And you saw your husband Herbert there with a murdered girl. But I... But he did not see you there. You sneaked out of the place. I... I didn't want to make a scene there. Where did you go when you left the coronet? I came home, straight home. All right, then tell me. You recognize this bracelet? Why, yes. Yes, I do. It's mine. But where did you get it? It was beside Daisy Simpkins' body. Beside the body of the girl you told me that you had never seen before in your life. I lost that bracelet, Mr. Chameleon. I lost it. I don't know how it got there. I'll find out, Mrs. Cook. Goodbye. But wait, Mr. Chameleon. Goodbye. Get anything out of her, Mr. Chameleon? More lies, Dave. More lies. Did you get anything for me? Well, the only thing was at Allen's department store where Daisy Simpkins' husband works. Yes. A couple of people in the packing room told me Simpkins had picked up a hammer and tried to kill some guy there he'd caught out with his wife. Still, I don't think Simpkins killed his wife, though. Do you, Mr. Chameleon? Somebody killed her, Dave. The only way I can get the evidence is to put myself in... In disguise. What disguise, Mr. Chameleon? Well, Daisy Simpkins' murder was conceived in the Coronet Cocktail Lounge. Herbert Cook was with her. His jealous wife saw him with her. The scene was witnessed by John Anderson. And Daisy's husband is not to be forgotten. The answer to this case is among them, so... So um, you're going there disguised? No. But in the disguise of a waiter from the Coronet Lounge, a slimy blackmailing waiter named Maury Leone, I'm going to write a few blackmailing letters accusing each person concerned of the murder. That will bring out the killer, Dave. And now, 24 hours later, in the furnished room, such as a waiter might occupy, we find Mr. Chameleon waiting tensely, disguised as a waiter from the Coronet Cocktail Lounge, with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. And Mr. Chameleon is saying, Something's got to happen soon, Dave. Each letter I sent out signed a waiter from the Coronet Cocktail Lounge was a direct threat to that person's safety. I gave them this phone number. I said to call first. But, Mr. Chameleon, when they do call... Here we go, Dave. This is it. Hello? Yes, this is the waiter at the Coronet Cocktail Lounge. Yeah, I sent that letter. I want $300. Tonight will be fine. Yeah, here in my room. Uh, You have the address? Ten o'clock sharp. Remember, I want $300 in cash. You better knock on the door three times so I know it's you. That does it, Dave. Did you recognize the voice, Mr. Chameleon? No, it was as heavily disguised as mine. Now we have work to do. I want all of those people shadowed, every one of them trailed during the entire evening, right up to ten o'clock. Ten o'clock, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Dave. Daisy Simpkins' murderer should soon arrive to meet me, disguised as a waiter from the Coronet Cocktail Lounge. Here they are. You all set, Dave? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Stand in back of the door. Here I go as the waiter. Come in. Come in. I've been waiting for you. Here's your money. Switch on the lights, Dave. I've got her. So, Susan Cook, you're the murderer. No, I'm not. I'm not. And what are you doing here, Susan? I was told to bring the money here to a waiter, not to you, Mr. Chameleon. I don't know what the trick is, but I believe... What? Never mind, Dave. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, you... Dave, step outside. Hide under the stairs. The real murderer will be here in seconds. He'll be here to kill Susan and pin the murderer on the blackmailing waiter. Now, quick, Dave. Right, Mr. Chameleon. I've got my gun ready. Good. Mr. Chameleon, then you believe me? Easy, easy, Susan. I hear somebody opening the front door. Don't fall on it. Unkeep him up, my friend. Now, straight ahead to that door. Here's your man, Mr. Chameleon. Almost got me, too. Well, John Anderson, 
At last, the murder of Daisy Simpkins, the gold digger, is solved. I came because this woman, Susan Cook, told me she was paying blackmail to a waiter to save her husband. I, I was afraid for her. That's a horrible lie, Mr. Chameleon. He gave me the money and told me to bring it here. It was the only way to save my husband. Shut up, you... Never mind, John Anderson. I've got you. But I had no reason to kill Daisy Simpkins. I got you, Anderson, when you lied about Susan's bracelet. The one we found next to Daisy's body. You knew that Herbert Cook had taken that bracelet and given it to Daisy Simpkins. I thought it was lost. No, it wasn't, Susan. And in that way, Anderson, you tried to throw suspicion off yourself. You, Anderson, bought Daisy Simpkins those expensive clothes. You were the one who drew advanced salary from your employers, not Herbert Cook. And the $300 you gave Susan to bring here tonight were marked bills. Bills you pilfered from the office safe. I marked them myself this afternoon. All right. All right, I... I killed her. She bled me white. She took every dollar I had. And she threw me over for Herbert Cook. I hated her. I hated him, too. I left her body in Herbert's driveway. I... I hoped he'd be convicted. (laughs) Strange how some women can poison everything they touch. I imagine once, John Anderson, you were quite a decent man. But I arrest you now for murder. Daisy Simpkins destroyed you just as thoroughly and completely as you destroyed her. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. When you have a social or business engagement, don't let an ordinary headache upset it. Remember, Bayer Aspirin will bring you relief and quickly. Millions know how fast Bayer Aspirin works. If you've never tried it, a simple test will show you how quickly a Bayer Aspirin tablet is ready to go to work. This test reveals what happens in your stomach when you take Bayer Aspirin. All you do is drop the tablet in a glass of water and time its disintegrating speed. When it starts to disintegrate, it's ready to go to work. And as you'll see, Bayer Aspirin tablets start disintegrating almost instantly. They bring amazingly fast relief because they're actually ready to go to work in two seconds. When you buy, ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Organ Grinder Murder Case. Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson and written by Marie Balmer and Frank Hummert from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. You probably have heard or read about the remarkable discovery that actually cuts down tooth decay, ammoniated tooth powder. Today, Dr. Lyons, America's favorite tooth powder, is available in this ammoniated form. Based on a formula developed by University of Illinois scientists, it destroys bacteria lactobacillus acidophilus, which cause cavities. Thus, it not only cuts down tooth decay, but pain, worry, and expense as well. So to reduce tooth decay, To have sounder, healthier, handsomer teeth, use ammoniated Dr. Lyons tooth powder. Both regular Dr. Lyons tooth powder and new ammoniated Dr. Lyons are at all drug and toilet goods counters. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in the Organ Grinder murder case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.